In my grandmother's house, where it was quiet and still, there was a disturbing weight in the air, like invisible forces were pulling at the edges of reality. As night fell, there was a strong sense of unease that made the adults whisper their fears. Even my grandmother, who is generally very strong, showed signs of being upset inside. What really scared people though was when the strange spiritualist showed up, dressed in robes with old symbols on them. She called on spirits from the unknown with deep respect, setting off a frantic dance of torch flames and casting shadows that seemed to have their own life. Then, there was a furious explosion of energy that covered us all in darkness, making us feel suffocated and lost. The spiritualist's voice cut through the darkness and called out a ghostly figure, an ethereal manifestation of pain and desire. From that moment on, our trip into the depths of fear and despair began. With each step, the scary mysteries of my grandmother's haunted house became clearer. Welcome to Eerie Encounters and Hauntings. We are thrilled to have you join us for two new spine-tingling tales of the paranormal each week, stories that will make you shiver with fear and keep you on the edge of your seat. From haunted houses to possessed objects, we have the most bone-chilling tales of the supernatural. Get ready for a terrifying journey into the unknown with our bone-chilling episodes featuring blood-curdling stories that will send shivers down your spine. So hit that like button, share the horror with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. This story will make shiver in fright. This is entitled The Terrifying Secrets of My Grandmother's House. This was shared by Mei from Taiwan. Let's get started. It felt like the air in my grandmother's house was holding the weight of forces that couldn't be seen as the night went on. The adults looked at each other tensely and spoke softly so that we kids wouldn't notice how shaky things were getting. My grandma usually makes me feel strong and at ease, but she looked uneasy that time. Her eyes were mostly calm, but there was a hint of doubt in them. She tried to look normal, but the way her hands were shaking showed how upset she was inside. When the psychic from the neighborhood showed up, things got tense. Everyone looked at her as soon as she walked in the door. Her long robes had special symbols on them, and she seemed to know things that were very old and didn't seem to belong to this world. All the information in the world could fit in her eyes, which looked like pools of knowledge. It was like they were cutting through the veil of everyday life to see what secrets were hidden in the shadows. The spiritualist began her ceremony with great reverence. As she called on the spirits that lived in the world of the unknown, she moved with grace and purpose. The torch flames moved to the beat of her spells as she spoke, making shadows that looked like they had their own lives. When the right reached its peak, there was a stress in the air that got stronger as time went on. Everything in reality seemed to have been pushed to its limits by forces that wanted to break down the walls between worlds. Then, all of a sudden, there was a powerful power surge that turned off all the lights and left the room dark. All of us let out a gasp because we were scared of what we didn't know and our senses were weakened from the lack of light. It was very dark in the room, but the spiritualist's words could be made out. Even though it was dark, it was strong and steady. She called to the ghosts that lived in the dark with a voice that sounded like it knew a lot about the past and told them to come out into the light. They did show what kind of people they were. The flickering lights once again filled the room, and we saw the ghostly shape of Lorelai. Her face had a glow that came from another world. It was both scary and beautiful how she looked, which shows how strong the human spirit can be even when there is a lot of pain. We learned about the terrible incident that had happened to Lorelai from the spiritualist's talk with her. The sad and strange details of her death were made public. Her voice was like a whisper in the wind, and it talked about love and sadness. It was the voice of a soul that was caught between worlds and wanted to break free. When the psychic was done talking to Lorelai, there was a heavy sadness in the room. It felt like a thick blanket of sadness from hundreds of years ago was pressing down on us. There was sadness, but there was also hope. There was a flash of light that cut through the darkness and showed how to heal and forgive. After that, my family went on a journey of finding, going back in time to find out what really happened to Lorelai. We read old books and torn papers and put together pieces of her story like a puzzle whose last piece had been lost for a long time. 
we dug deeper into the past to find the long hidden secrets. That's how we learned about how much pain Lorelai had been through and how she had been treated badly all her life. We held a solemn ceremony at my grandmother's house to remember Lorelai and respect her soul, which had been through a lot on its journey through the ages. As the darkness grew, we prayed and blessed the spirit that had changed our lives in ways we could never have imagined. We sent them love and thanks as the candles flickered like lights of hope in the rising darkness. As we stood there, we shared our sadness and our desire to make things right. I felt a deep peace wash over me, like Lorelai were right there with us, a quiet presence in the middle of the storm. I knew right then that her spirit had finally found the peace it had been looking for and that her journey through the darkness was over. The house where my grandma lived changed after that. It was no longer haunted by the ghost of disaster. Instead, peace and quiet spread through the whole place. I would always have a soft spot in my heart for those old, worn out walls and floors. Even though the world is sad and full of evil, love and kindness can still last. While there was a new sense of calm around my grandmother's house, there was still a hint of unease that was so close it could be heard. It looked like the shadows in the corners of the room had come to life and were moving around. Anyone who could see could feel their scary presence. Everything was pitch black outside at midnight, and the only sound I could hear was my heart pumping. I would often have tense thoughts about ghostly figures that were just out of reach. Thoughts seemed to come from the walls of the house as well. They were creepy and soft. They talked about curses that were too old to be broken and secrets that had been forgotten. They also talked about dark forces that were sleeping and waiting for the right time to attack unconscious souls. I tried to tell myself the words were just in my head, but they wouldn't go away. Every night, they got louder and would not stop. The house seemed to be alive, the walls were shaking with a bad energy that wanted to grab me. That terrible night, I was lying in bed ready for any sign of trouble. As soon as I felt it, there was something cold and damp in the room that gave me chills. I was scared to open my eyes because I knew what was in the dark would be scarier than anything I could think of. Right after that, the presence went away as quickly as it had come, leaving me alone in the pitch black night. But I couldn't get rid of the fear that had taken over me. It stuck to me like a blanket of darkness and said it would eat me alive. A lot of strange things started happening at my grandmother's house every day after that. It was like reality had begun to break down. There were times when things would go away and then come back in the weirdest places. No one knew where the strange sounds in the halls came from all night. After having detailed, scary dreams that seemed to seep into reality, it was hard to tell the difference between dream and real life. When I woke up, I was cold and sweaty and my heart was beating so fast. It was hard to breathe because it was so dark. With its narrow halls and hidden passageways that led nowhere, the house looked like it had been turned into a prison. It was like I couldn't get away, no matter how hard I tried. It kept pulling me back into itself. The darkness that had taken over my grandmother's house got even worse as the days turned into weeks and then months. Its twisted webs were ready to grab anyone who dared to enter. There was no way I could understand, forgive, or escape the horrible things that were inside. I didn't know what evil force was planning these horrible things. Even though there was a cloud of doubt and fear in my grandmother's house, life went on. There was an evil force that seemed to have grown deep inside the old house, and every night something scary would happen. It felt like no matter how hard I tried. I couldn't get rid of the fear that was slowly killing me. It felt like darkness had seeped into my bones and was slowly poisoning me. My thoughts were a tornado of fear and despair. There it was, a soft, sad wail that echoed through the house like a lament. I heard it one night while I was lying in bed, my nerves as tight as bowstrings. I thought at first that it was just the wind roaring through the old roof's beams. But as the sound got louder and stuck around longer, I knew it had to be much worse. I could barely move or breathe as the crying went on because the sound was so awful. It became so loud that it shook me and made my teeth chatter. I had never heard anything like what I heard before. 
It was a sound of unimaginable sadness and insatiable desire that made my heart freeze. Soon after, the crying stopped as quickly as it had begun, leaving behind a heavy silence that surrounded me like a blanket. As I lay there shaking and wide-eyed, I couldn't shake the thought that something bad was just outside my awareness and ready to attack at any moment. The first rays of dawn broke through the curtains and cast long shadows across the room. I let out a sigh of relief. I thought that the worst was over, which may have been a mistake. But deep down, I was sure that the darkness that had come into my grandmother's house would not leave me or any of us. Also, as I got out of bed to face another day of unbearable fear, I couldn't help but wonder what other horrors were waiting for me in the depths of the night, what other nightmares were waiting to pull me down into the abyss from which there was no way out. The fear that filled my grandmother's house seemed to get stronger over the days, casting a long shadow over every awake moment. Every sound made me more alert because I was always on edge and my nerves were stressed. Strange things began to happen every day, and each one was scarier than the last. Things would move around on their own, going under tables and out of sight, only to appear again in places they shouldn't have been. The comments that were just annoying at first kept coming up and getting louder. The words were turning into murmurs I couldn't understand. It felt like they were making fun of the fact that I was there. Then there were the dark, shapeless figures that followed me everywhere I went. They watched me all the time from the edges of my field of vision, just out of reach. They were always ready to attack when the time was right. I tried very hard to turn them off and act like they were only in my head, but I knew they were really something much worse. As the nights got longer and the darkness outside wrapped around us like a heavy blanket, I took more time to be alone. I thought I was losing touch with the real world. I thought that crazy thoughts were twisting around my mind and pulling me closer and closer to going crazy, but I couldn't fight them. Then, one night, as I lay in bed with my heart racing and my breath coming in short, rough gasps, I saw it, a person standing at the foot of my bed. Its eyes were bright with evil, and its face was hidden by darkness, but I couldn't scream, run away, or do anything else to get away from those eyes. I was frozen with fear that was so strong it felt like it could swallow me whole. The figure let out a low, deep growl that shook the house to its core. It talked about curses and sins from the past that no one remembered. It also talked about a darkness that had been sleeping for hundreds of years, waiting for the right time to attack the world with all its evil power. Then, with a sound like a branch breaking, the figure was gone, leaving me again in the dark. But I could still remember it, like a brand that stuck in my mind and always made me think of the bad things I wasn't aware of. It was dark in the room when the first rays of dawn broke through the blinds. I knew I would never be able to leave my grandmother's house again. I wasn't the same person I used to be because the evil had seeped into my soul. Being outside in the early morning cold made me decide, I was going to leave this evil place and the awful thoughts of hopelessness and horror that had been following me for a long time. But I knew that the darkness would follow me when I left the house. It would always be there hiding in the dark until the right time to attack. If this video left you spellbound, dive deeper into the world of chilling tales by joining our channel, Eerie Encounters and Hauntings. Access a treasure trove of bone-chilling stories waiting for you with new episodes two times a week. Spread the fear among your friends and family who crave a good scare and give them goosebumps. We'd love to hear your spine-tingling experiences as well, so don't hesitate to share them in the comments. You can also send us your story so we can feature it in one of our future episodes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Stay scared. Disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. The stories depicted in this video are shared by people who believe they are true, but they have not been verified. Any resemblance to real people or events is purely coincidental. The views and opinions expressed in this video are those of the people who shared the stories and do not necessarily reflect the views of YouTube, Google, or Facebook. The channel does not endorse the views expressed in this video. This video is not intended to be used as evidence of any supernatural or paranormal activity. If you are experiencing paranormal activity, 
please contact a qualified professional.